All right, family, we got a lot to cover today. And uh, uh, I want you to go in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to spend a lot of time in, in the book of Isaiah. But we're going to be talking about fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. You know, fasting has become a very uh, trendy thing these days. Uh, it's usually associated with some type of weight loss uh, program or weight management program. You hear a lot about intermittent fasting and, and all these different things that that people are doing which is all well and good but I don't want it to steal away from the powerful experience that God wants us to have as we dedicate time to him to fast and pray fasting in the original Hebrew is som it's spelled T S O M and it's pronounced som and it literally means to fast and to separate yourself from food. So when we talk about fasting and prayer, we're literally talking about laying down food and sometimes drink for a period of time in order to dedicate ourselves for, to fasting, praying, and going after God in a whole new way. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about fasting. Now, in this day and age, it extends beyond just food and drink. See, back in the day, food was the center of the community. Most of the uh, communities back in biblical times centered around agriculture and trade. So when you decided to fast food, it wasn't just that you were fasting food, you were actually setting down the very work that you were doing. So you weren't out plowing in the fields, you weren't harvesting, you weren't doing anything like that. You were letting everything rest, and you were resting and not doing work, and you were also letting your body rest from eating food. So when you dedicated your time to fasting and prayer, it wasn't just, I'm going to skip a meal, so I'm, I'm, I'm letting go of 30 minutes, 40 minutes in a day, or uh, maybe it's a total of two or three hours that you spend in time eating during the day. It was literally giving up the entire day to be with God. Because they didn't have fast food restaurants. It wasn't a, a 10 minute trip down the street and then shoveling food down your face and all you gained by fasting was, was 15 minutes. No, it was you didn't plow, you didn't harvest, you didn't, you didn't thresh the wheat, you didn't beat it into, into flour, you didn't bake it into bread, you didn't pour the oil on it, you didn't press the oil, you didn't do any of that stuff. You just rested. So it was really a lifestyle of fasting, not moments of fasting. It was a lifestyle of prayer and being with God. It wasn't just moments of prayer and being with God. So now fast forward into our day and age where we have very different jobs that most of which are not agriculturally based and do not take us uh, away from the work that we need to do when we're fasting. We have to adjust. We also are in a day and age where other things dominate our time and our thoughts that we need to get a break from. Entertainment, TV, uh, social media, all of these things that bombard our mind like, like soul candy that just fill us with all this junk. And our body needs uh, a, a rest from that. Our spiritual body needs a rest from that. So when we fast, we are literally putting down our flesh because it's not just the rest that we need. It's also we need to hear from God. So I want to I wanna read from Isaiah 58 because in Isaiah 58, God speaks specifically on how we are supposed to fast through the prophet Isaiah. So have your Bibles with you. I'm not going to put this on screen because it's very long. So let's read this together. Isaiah 58, and we're going to start at verse 1. The Lord says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. So he's saying, look, my, my people at this particular time, they are fasting and they're loving to do these religious rituals and things so that they can feel spiritual. 
but they're in transgression. They love approaching God. They love fasting. They love putting on the appearance of doing what's right. But he says, your hearts are not right because you're still in transgression. In verse 3, he says, Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? Now listen to the hearts of the people there. And, and, and this is what I want to speak to first. Fasting is not about trying to get something from God. It's about getting closer to God. See, they're saying, Lord, we fasted and we, we did all these things. We threw sackcloth on and we threw ashes on our head and we, we moaned and we wailed. But you haven't answered our prayer. You haven't given us what we wanted. See, their heart in approaching God is wrong through fasting and prayer. When we approach God through fasting and prayer, it's not so we can gain more uh, material things or our desires. It's so that we can gain a better relationship with the Lord. When we're close to God, when we have an uninhibited, free, flowing relationship with Him, and we can hear His voice, Man, that brings peace, and and that is the pathway to to all of our desires, our godly desires, being fulfilled, is being close to Him. So that is the purpose of fasting, is to get close to Him, and He he expands on that. It says, continuing in verse 3, In fact, in the day you fast, you find pleasure, and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife, and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness he's saying look the reason that you're 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 fasting again your hearts are wrong you're trying to exploit this you're trying to you're trying to find favor in doing these things but your heart is not right god says it's it's wickedness it's wickedness but we're not going to fast that way We're going to have a right heart when we dedicate this month of January to fasting and praying. He says, you will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Saying, look, we're not fasting so that God will hear us better. God does not need us to fast in order to hear us. He hears us no matter what. He's God. Nothing inhibits him from hearing your heart and your request. See, that's how we need to approach God. We're not approaching him saying, okay, if I afflict my soul, if I punish myself by not eating, if I throw sackcloth sackcloth on and, and I put ashes on my head and I moan and wail and pretend like I'm so sorry, woe is me, then maybe God will have uh, mercy on me and, and give attention to me and then he'll hear me. That's not how God works. God can hear everything. He knows our desires before we even ask. So putting on a, an act like we're moaning and we're, and we're suffering, that's not what he wants. The purpose of fasting is not to suffer. The purpose of fasting is to come before the Lord and hear him better. So he says, don't, don't fast just to suffer. Don't fast just to, in, in our day and age just to try and lose weight. Don't use this as a weight loss strategy so that now... Uh, and then on a, on a side dish of a prayer, maybe God will listen to you. He said, no, this is the way you fast. In verse 5, he says, Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? He's like, look, you guys are just going through the motions. Verse 6, is this not the fast I have chosen? So God says, look, this is, this is what I don't want you to do. I don't want the religiosity. I don't want the trying to be super spiritual. I don't want you to do these things. This is the fast that I want. To loose the bonds of wickedness. To loose the bonds of wickedness. See, one of the purposes, I want to talk about the purposes of fasting as we go through verse 6 here. One of the first purposes of fasting is repentance. Repentance. See, when they would put sackcloth and ashes on, it was a sign of mourning. When, when people passed away, they would also put on uh, uh, sackcloth 
It was a sign of mourning and in regret and pain. One of the purposes of going through this fast is for us to repent of anything that we've done against God, any mindsets that we've taken on, any actions that we've done that are contrary to Him, anything that we've done. We need to repent and loose the bonds of wickedness. Turn real quick to uh, the prophet Joel. Turn to Joel real quick. Joel chapter 2. It's right after Hosea. You just keep flipping us in the minor prophets. Joel chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 12. Leading up to verse 12, um, the prophet Joel is talking about the day of the Lord, God's judgment on, on people. And now he, he, he calls his people now to repent to, so that they can avoid the judgment that is coming because of their transgressions and their sins. In verse 12 he says, Now therefore says the Lord, Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. See, fasting is about repentance. It's about putting down all these things that have distracted us from God, that we've exalted above God, and laying down on our face and saying, Lord, we've done wrong. Father, search my heart. If there's anything that I've done against you, please help me. See, we can, be get, we can get into a mode where we're just going and going and going and going, especially during these holiday seasons. And we get caught up in the traditions and the culture and all these things. And, and our, our walk with God can take a back seat to the demands that are right in front of us. And as we go on that path, we get further and further away from God. And then we start noticing that our mindset, uh, the words of our mouth, the, the actions that we're taking become less and less in alignment with the character of Christ. So this is a time to, to come back to that place and repent. Let's continue. It says, Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart. Rend means tear your heart. That means be sorrowful. Recognize what's, what's been going on. Recognize the distance between you and God. And how anything that we might have been doing that would separate us from Him. And I'm not talking about the major things, even though there's things that, that, that really hinder our relationship with God. It could be the buildup of little things that, that happen. So rend your heart and not your garments. Rend your heart and not your garments. See, they would tear their clothes as a, as a sign of being in mourning and, and in despair and, and so upset. And God says, that's all well and good. Anybody can tear their clothes and pretend like we're mourning. But he said, I want you to rend your heart. Let your heart be broken before me. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. God is merciful. If you're out there right now and you're, and you're thinking, man, this last year, 2020, has been difficult because of the difficulties added by COVID, all these shutdowns and all the different tragedies and, and, and uh, you know, confusion that has happened during this year, and you've slipped away from God. Listen, God is not so angry and disgusted that he's like, oh, gosh, I don't want anything to do with you. No, he is merciful. He is slow to anger. He wants you to come back to him. So many times we feel like we've gone so far and we've done so much wrong or that habit has been a part of us for so many times and we've, we keep making the same mistake over and over and we get down on ourselves and we start thinking, man, I can't do anything right. God doesn't want anything to do with me. Maybe this is just who I am and God's going to be mad at me. Forget it. No, that is not true. God is a loving father and he is full of mercy and kindness. Remember, the Bible says that uh, mercy triumphs over judgment. God's mercy is greater than His judgment. All we need to do is come back to Him. So He says, just repent. And this time of fasting and prayer is dedicated to that. So if you have things that you need to repent for, if there are mindsets and things that, uh, that, uh, that we have taken on, let's repent for those things. We just need to come before Him. And it takes a weight off of our shoulders. It takes a weight off of our souls when we, re when we do that. Let's continue. It says, 
Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. There's that word assembly again. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Man, whoo! Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Family, we not, need not only repent as individuals, this is a time of fasting and prayer and repentance for us as a nation. The United States of America has systematically over time departed from the basic principles that have founded us that were dedicated to uh, uh, honoring God. In our foundational documents, it was to honor God, but we have stepped away from that. And there are members of the body of Christ that have gotten in agreement with things that are outside of the will of God. We need to repent for those things. This has been a, a, a nation that has been known for its, its, its character, its foundation in God. And yes, we've made mistakes along the way, but we need to repent for what we've done now. We can no longer get in agreement with things that are evil. We can no longer cast our cast our votes, cast our, our, our attention and our, uh, our loyalty and our adoration to these things that are contrary to God, nor can we turn a blind eye to them. If we turn a blind eye to these great evils and these great wicked things that are, that are happening in our nation, then we need to repent for, for not acknowledging these things and doing something about it. We need to cry out to God, Lord, have mercy on our nation. Lord, have mercy on us. Save us, Lord God, from, from uh, coming destruction and judgment because judgment is due our nation. So we need to repent as a church. We need to repent as a nation with fasting and mourning and weeping and a rending of a heart. The heart of this nation needs to rend. We need to put down our prideful ways and thinking that we know what's best and we need, to get it, we need to get back to the basic principles of God, that we honor the Lord, that we obey His commandments, that the commandments of God supersede the traditions of men and our desires. We need that. And we need to be praying that God would have mercy on us, that there would be an administration that would honor God above honoring culture, that would honor the commandments of God rather than honoring the, the whims and desires of a people that are easily led astray by the desires of their own flesh. We must repent. And we need to stand in the gap and intercede as, peop as God's people for this nation and weep and mourn. So repentance, that we might break the bonds of wickedness over our nation, that we might break the bonds of wickedness over our own hearts and minds. Let me tell you right now, if you have been dealing with something, if there's been a, a habit or a hang up or an addiction or something that has been tormenting you and has you bound up literally with change in your heart, change in your mind, change even physically. You are physically addicted to something. Let me tell you right now, when you fast and pray, it breaks the bonds of wickedness. It loosens the chains. And this is not just some spiritual thing. This is a very physical thing. This is a very mental thing too. When we set ourselves aside to fast and pray and detox our bodies, detox our minds, detox our spirit, and focus on the things of God, it breaks those bonds. And I'm telling you, it will be powerful. Listen to what God says. He says, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. When we fast and we put down food and we put down all these things, man, and we focus on God, it lightens the load. It lightens it and we can feel the very presence of God because there's nothing in the way. The TV's not in the way. The, your friends on Facebook are not in the way. Everybody's opinion about what's going on is not in the way. You are just sitting there in the presence of God in prayer and hearing His voice and reading His word and there is a lightness and man, the burdens are light. Jesus said this, Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
If you're heavy in your heart, if you're heavy in your soul, it is time to fast and pray and take on the burdens of Christ. If things are heavy, it's because you've been bearing a burden that you weren't meant to carry. And it's time to lay it aside and come before the Lord so that you can feel his strength and his peace. Listen, he says, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Woo! Come on. You've been bound. You've been bound by fear and anxiety. You've been bound by depression and oppression. Listen to what he says. You will loose the bonds of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. This is what God wants for you. Freedom. Liberty. To be able to breathe easy, to exhale. This is God's desire. And this is what happens when we fast. And what we're going to get into how we fast in just a minute. I just want to talk about the purposes. I want you to be excited about what God has promised. This isn't Jesse promising it. I'm excited about this, y'all, because this is a promise of God. And when we, when we believe that what God says is true and we act on what God has told us to do, then we see the power of God move in our life. It is a reality. And when we prepare ourselves to fast and pray, there needs to be an expectation that the reality of the promise of God will enter into your life and there will be breakthrough. Absolutely there will be. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. Now, verse 7. Verse 6 says what God wants to do. So he declares the very purpose of this. But 7 is how you do it. 7, he speaks to the heart of it. Listen, verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Listen, the way we fast is not huddling in a corner and just denying ourselves and suffering like I'm not going to eat, I'm not going to do all that. No, the Lord says when you fast, you take your food and you give it to others. When those people who are naked, you make sure that they are clothed. When they have no place, you take them in. This is what God has called us to do. That we would be a people who would come together and not just fast and pray for our sake, but we would look externally and give to those who are in need. That's what God has called us to do. So when we fast our food, listen, we're not just saving on the grocery bill. We are taking that which we would eat and giving it to those who are hungry. This is why Church on the Go is so important. We're going to be, we're kicking off our fast by doing exactly what the Bible says here in Isaiah 58. We're going to bring food to those who are hungry. We're going to bring water to those who are thirsty. We are going to literally bring clothes to those who are naked and clean the clothes of those who are dirty and filthy. We're going to visit those who are in need and help those. See, when you, when you take your eyes off of you and all your problems and you put them on those who are in need, God opens up the windows of heaven. See, when, you're, when we're self-focused and we're just thinking about how everything's impacting us and woe is me and all these different things that are going on, and maybe it's not just woe is me, there's some real things that people are dealing with. And I totally understand that. But the way that we give that to God, see, many people say that all the time. Oh, well, you just got to give that to God. Just give it to God. You know, let go and let God. That's a wonderful statement, but no one tells you how to do it. But the Lord does here. You want to break the bonds of wickedness? Get your mind off of your bondage and go set other people free. That is the key to receiving your own freedom. And let me, let me continue. In verse 8, it says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall shall be his noonday. Man, listen to the promise of God. He said, when you fast, when you set your heart towards me and you put your mind 
off of you and onto the needs of other people, God says, now I'm going to, now I'm going to hear from, from heaven for you. Now these things are going to break off of you. Why? Because your mind is now put on God and what he's purposing to do. See, when we get close to God and we gain more of him, we start being about our father's business. He says, you stop pointing the finger. You stop being a busybody and getting everybody else's business. And you start focusing on your father's business. Stop worrying about what this person is doing and this person is doing and commenting on every daggum thing that's going on. Man, we just get focused on our father's business. And man, things break off. Yokes get destroyed. Burdens get lifted. Hearts get renewed. This is the purpose of a fast. Man, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide, listen, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words. Woo, family, that's a good one. We need to stop speaking just our opinions and the traditions of men and what's acceptable to our culture and start speaking the words, the commands, and the heart of God. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Family, let me just read that part of you again. It says, it says here, it says, Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Family, this is how we restore our nation. This is how we get back on track. This is how we repair the breach. People say, how do we bring unity? How do we repair the breach? Through fasting and prayer, through repentance, through calling those things that are evil, evil, and those things that are good, good, by getting back to a place where we acknowledge God, no longer speaking and getting in agreement with the rhetoric of the culture, but we get in agreement with the Word of God, and we speak those things, we pray those things, we act those things, we live those things on a daily basis, and the Holy Spirit will come in and restore and rebuild and bring things back. He says that, listen, he says... The Lord will guide you continually, back in verse 11, and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Listen, family, there are times coming that we don't know about. We know that as Jesus, the day of the Lord approaches and Jesus' return comes, that things are going to get darker and darker. But there's a promise from God that as we turn to him, that he will, he will take care of us in times of of drought, that we will be like a well-watered spring so long as we, we move away from wickedness and we dedicate our hearts to the Lord. This is, this is a promise from God. He, he commands us to observe the Sabbath and to, and to be at rest, to not speak our own words. And there's a promise there to repair the breach, to restore. But it, it begins with us. It begins with repentance. It been, begins with us coming to a place of honoring the Lord with everything that we do and putting down those things that so easily distract us. This is the command of God. This is the purpose of God. This is the promise of God. Family, I want you to be excited about this fast that's coming out. I want you to be excited about what God is going to do. And I want to talk now, I just want to talk briefly about how we do this fast now. Now that we see the purpose, now that we see the promise, now we, we know what God wants us to do in the midst of this fast, let's talk a little bit about what that looks like practically speaking. So, so we know that God wants to break the bonds of wickedness. That is, that is a promise of Him. We know that He wants to, uh, to focus on others. We know that He wants us to break through. But 
I want to talk about some of the ways that we that we actually fast. So number one, we fast food. Fasting is not just about, oh, well, I'm going to put down cookies for today. No, there is a time dedicated to where we put down food. And I want to explain why food is so important. That is the, that is the foundation of our fast. The reason we put down food is, is manifold. Number one, we put down food for whatever period of time that God has is, is called you to so that we can dedicate the time that we would be preparing our food and feeding our bodies to prepare to feed our soul and our spirit. So it's a, it's a time uh, shift. We're shifting our time spent eating to time with God. So rather than just feeding our body, we are feeding our soul. So that's number one. It's a, it's a shift of time. Number two, it is to discipline our bodies. Paul says, I buffet my body and I beat it into submission. Fasting is a way of putting your body in check and making sure that your spirit is in control and not your flesh. See, there's a tug of war between your flesh and your spirit. And when we can gain discipline over our flesh, it strengthens our spirit. The one thing that your body, uh, I mean, one of the things that your body needs in order to survive is food. So if we can gain discipline over our uh, flesh by withholding from it something that it actually needs to live, and we can be disciplined in that, then what great a discipline are we going to have over those things that our body doesn't need to actually survive? See, if you can be disciplined and deny your flesh food, then you can be disciplined and deny your flesh gossip that it doesn't need to survive. You can deny your flesh, uh, you know, drugs. You can deny your flesh alcohol. You can deny your flesh all these things that so desperately want you to believe that you need them in order to survive. If we can deny ourselves something that we actually need to survive, then we are strengthened to deny those things that think, that we think we need to survive. Smoking, addiction, whether it's a physical addiction, an emotional addiction, whatever that is, pornography, lust, whatever that is, those things that your body does not need to survive begin to disappear when you have the discipline over the things that it does need. So number one, it's a time. Number two, it gains us discipline over our flesh and over every area of our life. Number three, it is a detox. It is a detox of our bodies. It literally helps the body flush away all the things that we take in on a regular basis that are not good for us. It resets your, your, uh, your, your body's uh, chemical balance when we do that. See, eating is, nece is necessary, but it's, it's very taxing on your body. It takes a lot of energy, and the food that we eat today, if we're honest, most of the food that we eat is, is not the best for us. We, we do our very best to be healthy, but sometimes we eat things in, that man has put their hands on too much, and those chemicals and all that stuff in there, it builds up in our body, and our bodies are amazing. God has made these bodies amazing to be able to deal with some tremendous abuse, but it needs a time of reprieve. Just as the Lord asked for the land to lay fallow and have a Sabbath rest, it's also good for our bodies to have a Sabbath rest from all the food that we eat and just dedicate it to being purified so that we can think better, we can live better, we can be healthier, and we can be stronger. So that benefit is not to be completely ignored, but it is something that does happen. And in the way that our bodies are detoxed by, by not eating food, we also can detox by not taking in things that feed our soul. So number one, let me, let, me, let me stay on track here. We fast food. Now, how do we fast food? The, the way you fast food, we find it in the Bible, is uh, done in several different ways. We see the extremes where Jesus had no food nor water for 40 days. Now, I'm not asking anyone to do that. Uh, I, I want you to be led by the Spirit. Some people fast simple, uh, uh, just a meal. There were times in the scriptures where people would fast just a meal and dedicate that time to fasting and prayer. There were times where they would fast and pray for three days. 
There are times where they would fast and pray for six days. And during that six days, they may not have no food, um, but they would have water. So there's several different ways that you can fast. So um, let's, let's just outline a couple. Uh, number one, there's the sun up to sundown method. This means that when the sun is, is up, there's no eating, and you dedicate that time to prayer and, and, and talking with the Lord. Now, I also understand that, remember, during this time when they would fast and pray, no one was working either. They weren't, they weren't doing those things. So there may be those who are, who are working and still need to uh, have that nourishment in order to complete the task that God has called you to. That, that is between you and the Lord. You just make sure that you are doing whatever you can in order to uh, put down your flesh and discipline it and not just use those things as an excuse. Just as, a, as an example, there's a member of our church, a mighty man of God, and uh, the Lord called him to do a fast. And he did no food and uh, I think he did no water for three or four days. But in the midst of that, he did a Spartan race. Didn't tell anybody he was fasting or praying, but he did a Spartan race. And the Lord sustained him, did this Spartan race, finished before anybody else, and he was just fine. So I, want to, I say that to encourage you that whatever the Lord has called you to do in your fast, he will also empower you to complete it. So there's, there's a sun up to, to sun down method. There's some who, who just go straight liquids for a, a period of days. Some people have done three days, four days, five days, seven days. However the Lord uh, leads you, make sure you do uh, what, he, what he tells you to do. Um, there are some who fast certain types of food. Um, they put down meat. Um, for a certain period of time, or breads, and they just eat vegetables in, 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 in water. As the Lord leads you, um, make sure that you're fasting. The important point is that you are disciplining your body. Whatever you're doing, it should be a level of discipline. And we should also remember that when we're, we're putting down our, our, our flesh in this way, it's also so that we can give to others. So whatever you would be eating, you, you dedicate to giving to others. So if you, were, you would have a, you know, a sandwich and an apple and a bag of chips that day, make that sandwich, get a bag of chips, grab that apple, put it in a brown paper bag. And as you're going throughout the day, pray that the Holy Spirit would lead you to a person that you could share that meal with and then share the gospel with. Remember that as we're, as we're going along. Now, as we're talking about fasting food, one of the things that I want to make sure that you do is that you only do what, one, the Lord leads you to, but also what you're prepared to do. If you've never fasted before, you want to take, make sure that you're, you're doing things in a way that are going to help you to focus on God and not just focus on afflicting yourself. So if you've never fasted before and you're going to, I'm going to do 21 days of no food and just water. Well, make sure you ask the Lord and make sure that you're, you're, in a proper place to do that. Make sure that it's not going to be something that would uh, be difficult for you to complete. Or if you have any medical conditions, make sure that it's something that's going to be conducive to, to, to that condition. Okay? I just want to put that out there um, so everybody knows. So the point is, is that we, we put down food. We put that down. So whether it's, it's doing sun up to, to sun down, uh, a standard for a certain length of time, three, six, seven days, um, and, and putting it down, or those who are doing extended periods. Just make sure you do your research. Now, again, I have an entire pamphlet online that you can go and, and download. It'll, it'll be up this afternoon, so you can download that and prepare, and it goes into much greater detail. So fasting uh, food and how you can do that is, is on there. Now, the other thing I want to talk about in terms of fasting is social media and media in general. We are shutting down cable, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. I'm calling this assembly to shut it all down. Why? Because it is through these mediums that our souls get fed the junk food, just as we feed our bodies junk food when we're in a rush. We need to put down the gossip. We need to put down all the bad news fake news, whatever news it is that's coming in. We need to separate ourselves from that. 
See, the reason we need to separate ourselves from that, because just as physical food can junk up our bodies and, for, and get our bodies to, to, to work differently than way, the way God designed them, we can clog ourselves up and things don't flow right. When we fill ourselves with media and entertainment and all that stuff, it clogs up our minds and our souls and our emotions. And God is not able to flow through us properly. We need to be in a place where we're hearing from God. And it's hard to hear from God when we have so many other voices speaking into our life. When we got CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, our friend over here, this theory, that theory, all this stuff speaking to us, you can't even hear the voice of God. Because the Lord speaks to us through a still, small voice. And God is not going to sh- out try and outshout the world because He wants us to be responsible for what we are hearing. So we put down all of that because whether you realize it or not, it is impacting the direction of your soul. Every movie you watch, every program, and there's a reason they call it a program that you watch and take into your soul, it is defining and directing, molding and shaping your soul. So just ask yourself, How much time am I spending on Facebook, Instagram, watching the news? And it's not even, you know, listening to the radio in the car. And then what are you listening to on that? Chances are 99% of it is not godly, not in line with, with scripture. And most of it is probably man's opinions and thoughts. And I don't say that as a condemnation. It's just a reality of what we take into our system, the way the world and our culture is set up. Can you imagine if we had 31 days where instead of taking all that in, we had dedicated time in the Word of God and reading and taking in those things that are about Him? That would be powerful. That would reshape and mold our soul and our mind, our will and our emotions back to the spirit. So we, we purpose to put those things down. And I'm calling and challenging you, body of Christ. Shut off the news. And when I say shut it off, I mean literally call your cable company and say, hey, I want to put my cable on hold for the next 30 days. I mean... Call Netflix, Hulu, and all that and say, hey, I'm putting this on hold for the next 30 days or I'm canceling this for the next 30 days. I'm not even going to pay you that 1095 or whatever it is. I don't even want to have access to it. I'm putting it down. Facebook, Instagram, shut it off. Put it on whatever settings they have so you don't get any notifications. I don't want your phone, and not I, but I'm calling you to this, the, the phones to bing. Every time you get a not- bing notification, bing notification, bing notification, shut them all down. I know that some people use Facebook for your business and everything. I'm asking you, trust the Lord. Use it as minimal as possible. I mean, for us, we're going to have our services and they will continue to be online, but we are going to be on shutdown. We will, we'll broadcast them on our website. We'll broadcast them on, on, on YouTube. And uh, uh, I'm thinking about whether we broadcast them on Facebook or not because then it requires you. So you know what? I'm making an executive decision right now. We're going to be off Facebook completely. You'll be able to watch this on YouTube and our, our website. So we're going to be off Facebook completely because I don't want to draw anybody back in. But put that stuff down. Instead of going to Facebook to to vent your feelings, go to the Lord. Go and talk to the Lord. Instead of trying to invoke other people's likes and agreement, hear the voice of God and hear what He's in agreement with. Instead of taking selfies, go out and be selfless and give your time and put that pretty face in front of somebody else's face and love on them and tell them the gospel. Family, we have to cleanse our soul. And it comes the same way that we cleanse our body through fasting is we remove ourselves from that and we let whatever is pure, whatever is just, whatever is lovely, if there is any virtue in it, if there is anything of any good report, we meditate on those things. And watch the water of the word wash over our hearts and minds and bring peace and joy and wash away fear, anxiety, unrest, anger, malice. 
jealousy, all of that will just be washed away as we move away from the things of the world and embrace the things of God. So important that we do that. Um, I want to talk to you a couple things about fasting as well. What it is and what it is not. Number one, fasting is not an attempt to just be more spiritual. It's not an attempt to just be more spiritual. I want to read uh, Matthew 6, verse 16 through 18. Matthew 6, verse 16 and, and, and 18. Um, it's not about spirit being spiritual. It's about getting closer to God. Before I read from Matthew, let me say this. Fasting and prayer go hand in hand. If you're just fasting, but you're not praying, all you're doing is starving yourself. You need to fast and pray and do the work of the ministry. That's what makes it effective. Remember, we read that in Isaiah 58. That as we extend our soul to the hungry, that's part of it. That is a huge part of it. So it's not just fast. It's fast, pray, and do the work of the ministry. Now, with that said, now Matthew 6, verse 16 through 18, it says this, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that you may appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father in secret. And he that's the Father that see you in secret will reward you openly. So Jesus is saying, look, when you're fasting and praying, don't go around telling everybody you're fasting and praying and trying to gain some type of spiritual brownie points or, or, or look a certain way. Just keep it to yourself. Just keep it to yourself. This is not so that we can appear uh, spiritual. Next, I want to remind you to be wholehearted in your fast. Be dedicated to the Lord. Don't be counting down the days like, man, I can't wait until this fast is over. No, you're missing the point. Absorb and take in every moment of every day and be looking for God to do something amazing. Have a, a right heart and guard your heart during this time. It's going to be difficult. You're going to be driving by in and out and catch that smell and you're like, oh my gosh, I want that so bad. That's totally normal. That's fine. That's not you being, you know, unspiritual. But what I'm saying is, is be disciplined and focus so intently on hearing the voice of the Lord and, and getting closer to Him that those things just kind of fade away and it's not even a, a, a big deal. Make sure that your heart is in the right place when, you, when you're fasting. And, uh, and likewise, when you're fasting, make sure that you're, as I said earlier, make sure that you're doing the will of God. Make sure you're doing the will of God, whatever that is. Dedicate your time to doing the will of God. For, for many of you, it might just be spending time with your family. Shutting off the TV, having conversations around the table, that's important. Here's, here's a suggestion. This is something that we do in, in our family. When we sit down at dinner at night, we sit down and we do our favorite part of the day and our most challenging part of the day and just let that open up conversation. Also, read the Bible. Do a Bible study around the table. Share the scriptures with, with your family. You know, play board games. You know, do, do something that's going to encourage uh, good family interaction and, and conversation to get closer during this time. Rebuild those bonds. You know, we want to break the bonds of wickedness, but you can also build the bonds of community and family during this time. Go to, go to Bible studies and hang out with friends and do all those things. Instead of being on Facebook, you know, get face to face with people and, and, you know, have a Bible study. Do something. Do something that's going to go out and encourage the, the, uh, and invoke the, the presence of the Lord and the doing of His will. Uh, I want to go over a couple things that might hinder your fast. A couple things that might hinder your fast. Number one, don't come into this fast with the mind with the mindset oh i'm just trying to i'm going to fast so god will give me this no 
come in with the mindset that I'm going to fast and God is going to guide me. Remember, that's what it said in Isaiah 58, that he will guide you continually. The most important thing that we get during this time is instruction from the Lord and direction from him. We want to hear his heart and his desire for us, not trying to get him to get in agreement with our desire for our life. That is not why we pray. That is not why we come before the Lord to try and get him to give us our desire. It's so that we can get his desires into our heart. So don't come into the fast trying to get something from God. Try to gain more of God. Number two, do have a heart of expectation. You should be expecting to hear from God. You should be expecting God to move in your life. Don't enter into this fast as simply a religious ritual. No, come in with eager expectation that God is going to move, that he's going to speak to you, that he's going to encourage you, that he's going to help you, that he's going to help you break those bonds as you turn your heart to him and to those in need. Have that heart of expectation. Um, again, lastly, make sure you're in the word. I want you to set a goal of how much of the word you're going to read. I'm going to read, you know, X amount of books of the Bible during this time. Instead of watching, you know, my, my Netflix show for an hour or two hours, dedicate yourself to reading the Bible for an hour or two hours. Get the word in your heart. The Bible says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. So let the word dwell in you richly during this time and watch what God does. Um, the, the last thing that I, that I want to in, encourage you to do during this uh, time of fasting is to have a plan. Don't, don't just say, well, what am I going to do today? Get down on your knees and pray and say, Lord, well, how do you want me to fast? Do you, do you want me to fast the entire month? And what do you want me to fast? What food do you want me to put down? What things do I need to lay aside for you? Um, and then plan it out. Have the calendar. This, this week I'm going to be fasting like this. This week I'm going to be fasting like this. You, you may not be fasting the whole time. He might want you to just dedicate seven days of fasting food during this time. But one thing I am calling us all to do is to fast from social media and all of those things that just soak up all of our time. I know it's particularly difficult because there's a shutdown that's, that's on us. And for a lot of people, this is how you communicate with others. That's, a, that's fine. But let's shut it down anyway. Go back to just texting people or email, communicating people by phone, give them a call, uh, you know, all those things. But shut down everything else and hear from the Lord. And I tell you, if you, if you do these things, if you have that plan, you hear from God on what he wants you to do, we're going to come out of this changed and transformed, closer to God, more full of his spirit, more full of the word, more encouraged, more hope, and better as a nation, I believe. Many churches, it's not just our church, many churches around the nation, even around the world, are going to be fasting this month. It is something that has become a wonderful tradition within the body of Christ for many believers to fast the month of January. So we're going to be getting in agreement with brothers and sisters from around the globe and asking God to move on, on our behalf and to reveal himself in a greater and deeper way. This is going to be a powerful month. Individually, collectively, and for our community, God is going to do an amazing work. Family, will you just pray with me right now? And we're going to ask God to, to bless our time of fasting and prayer as we prepare this week to enter into his presence and deny our flesh. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are just so grateful that we have this opportunity to come before you to fast and pray and seek your face with all of our heart. Lord, I know that there are so many people who are watching this who are, who are hesitant to do this fast, who don't know how to do this fast. But Father, we are trusting that as we direct our hearts towards you, that you are going to lead us and guide us and, do, and, and tell us exactly how to do this. Father, as we, as we put down our flesh through not eating food, as we put down our flesh by not watching the media and all these things that are constantly trying to infiltrate our soul, we trust and we thank you that you are going to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you are going to set our hearts aright, that you are going to renew our minds by the power of your Spirit, that you're going to keep us, Lord God, in a place where we are focused on you and dedicated to you. 
Father, we need your Holy Spirit to help us get through this because it is a challenge to our flesh. Our flesh is going to want its own way. It's going to want to do what it wants to do. It's going to find every excuse to quit. It's going to find every reason to be the exception. But Father, help us to be strong in you and the power of your might that we might overcome our flesh so that we, Lord God, can gain more of you. We want to be led by your Spirit. We want to hear your voice. We want to know you in a deeper way during this time. I pray, Lord God, for those who have never heard of fasting before, and this is going to be their first experience. Lord, I pray that, that you would speak to them and give them revelation during this time, that they would understand that this is not just a principle, but it is a powerful, powerful connection with you. Bless them, O oh Lord. Bless us all. And Lord, we do pray for our nation. Father, we do repent right now for the wickedness that, is, that has come upon our land. And we take responsibility as, as believers, and we intercede right now. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Rend our hearts, Father, that we would be broken for the sins of this nation. We, we, we ask, Lord, for repentance for all of your people, all of your body, for those who are in leadership. Lord, we pray for a repentant and broken and contrite spirit. We pray, Lord God, that we would turn away from the wicked things that we try to make law in your land that are contrary to the very scriptures and commandments that you've given us. Forgive us, O oh God. Have mercy on us, Lord God. Extend your grace to us again that we might continue to preach the gospel, Lord God, uninhibited. We ask it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we take this time to, to also reflect on everything that you've done for us and remember all the blessings that you've brought to us, Father. You have been so good to us, even in the midst of difficulty. And Lord, we don't look to the government. We don't look to uh, the economy. We don't look to the world. We don't look to CDC, the WHO. We don't look to anyone else. You are our healer. You are our strength. You are our peace. You are our provider, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. You are going to provide for us, Lord, just as you promised, that you are going to make streams in the desert, Lord God, that we are going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water that bears fruit in its season whose leaf does not wither, Lord God. We thank you that you are going to take care of your people regardless of what this, uh, this nation is entering into, regardless of what this world is trying to do, regardless of what the enemy is trying to, to squeeze into this nation, Lord God. We thank you that you are going to bring provision and health and healing and protection for those who call on your name. We thank you for that, Lord, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And family, I want to ask you right now, if there are those of you who are watching and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not know where you're going when this life is over, if you do not know the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, that guards your heart and mind through these difficult times, to where you can walk through the day without fear, anxiety, but, but complete hope and trust and assurance that God is going to take care of you, man, let me tell you, you can know Him today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation, and the Lord wants you to be a part of His family. So if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you can do that right now, and He will say yes. What does that mean? It means that you acknowledge that you're a sinner. Sinning is it's what all humans do. We all make mistakes because it's a part of our spiritual DNA. We mess up and break God's law. But when we do that, just as COVID causes us to quarantine, man, God has all of humanity in quarantine because He can have no part with sin. But Jesus Christ came to this earth over 2,000 years ago, he is God, became man so that he could die on the cross and become the antivirus, the permanent spiritual vaccine that overcomes sin, that puts us back into a position where we can have communion with God and know his will. And if you have never asked Jesus to Christ into your heart, you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, you've never repented for all that you've done. Repentance just means that you, you recognize that the direction that you're going in is the wrong direction, and then you turn and you go back towards God. You can do that right now. All you have to say is, Jesus, I do believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you are God. And I believe that you proved that you were God when you were raised from the dead after three days. I've made mistakes and I'm asking that you forgive me. And I want you to come in and make my life new. I've done my very best, but it hasn't been good enough and I still feel empty and I need you to fill me. So show me who you are. I give you my life. If you said that in your heart, if you believe that, if that is what God is, is revealing to you right now, then listen, the Bible says that you are saved. But there are some things that we want to do in, in, in order to, to help you in that process. We want to give you a Bible. 
I want to give you a Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. It is His instructions for us. It's when you're in those moments and you don't know what to do. It's what you turn to and God speaks to you and tells you what it is that He would have you do in that moment, in that situation. He tells you. He, he also wants you to be baptized. Baptism is, is, involves you being immersed in water and then being raised up out of it as a symbol of your death, burial, and resurrection, just like Jesus was buried and raised from the dead. It is a powerful connection between you and God that infuses you with power to live this new life. And we want to invite you to be a part of the family. We want you to be a part of everything that we have going on from our life groups to our Saturday night live services to all the events that we have coming up in this next year. And there are so many that we're excited to bring to you guys. But listen, if that's you and you made that decision for the very first time, I just want to say God bless you and I would love to connect with you. You can do that by going on LegacyFamily.Church. LegacyFamily.Church. When you go on LegacyFamily.Church, you can click on the Connect tab. When you click on the Connect, it's just going to ask you for some basic information, uh, whatever you feel comfortable giving, your name, uh, your address, your email, your phone number, so we can get in contact with you and just invite you to be a part of this family. We love you very much. Even though I don't know you yet face to face, I know you by the Spirit, and I love you, and I want God's best for you, and we want to be able to help lead and guide you with the wisdom of God during this time, and to be a help and assistance to you in anything you need in your life. So again, go to LegacyFamily.Church, and I would love to be able to connect with you there. Family, I'm going to open it up to if anyone has any questions. Again, that uh, number is 818 835 Four zero three zero eight one eight eight three five four zero three zero. You guys can ask any questions you want there. I'm also going to jump over to to YouTube and Facebook, see if we got any any questions popping up on on the stream. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. All right. Uh, Amen. Amen. Appreciate the words of encouragement. God is good. Uh, let's see. Any questions? All right. No questions on Facebook. We got a couple. We got a couple questions on uh, on text here. It says, "Where does obeying authority?" turning the other cheek and going the extra mile fit into these end times and this current political environment? Whew, that is a great question. Um, so where does obeying authority, turning the other cheek and going the extra mile fit into these end times and this current political environment? Um, it sounds like the heart of that question centers around um, we have a... Uh, certain laws and rules and people and government that are asking us to do things or commanding us even to do things that are contrary to the Word of God and aren't necessarily uh, in uh, alignment with truth. So yes, the Bible says that we are to obey authority because every authority that is established is established by God. So that is, that is something that is non-negotiable. The Bible says that. So what we need to understand is what is the authority here in the United States of America? And I'm going to answer this very quickly. There's much more depth that we can go into. But the authority here in the United States of America, uh, of America is the Constitution of the United States of America. And it starts out with we the people. So we the people of the United States of America, by power of the Constitution, are the authority. So when we see people in places of lesser authority, people in positions that fall under the Constitution, then their responsibility is to uphold the Constitution and the authority that was placed there and do so. So when we see people in lesser authority trying to override the greater authority, our obligation is to obey the greater authority. For example, when they say that we cannot worship and praise the Lord that this has changed, but when they were saying that we could not worship and nor could we sing, to the Lord in fellowship together, that is against the Constitution of the United States of America, which says that the government cannot hinder our free expression of religion and worship of God. So I obey the greater authority. 
Not only that, but one of the things that makes the United States of America unique is that in, its, our, in our foundational documents, it acknowledges that God's natural law, God's law, supersedes even the Constitution and man's law. So this is why it is the greatest uh, form, uh, government formulated uh, document in the history of the world and is, has been uh, mimicked uh, more than any other document is because of the, the, the wonderful insights that God gave our founding fathers in, in writing it. So I'm not, we are not disobeying authority because the authority that was written, the Constitution, under the law of God is what we obey first. So that's, that's a, a great question. Um, oh, this is a great insight. It says, while we're fasting and praying, I would encourage everyone to journal. Write down what God says to you through his word and through a still small voice as we pray daily before God. That is a great suggestion from Ms. Jennifer Clark. Journal and write down those things that God speaks to you, that he says to you. And really, this is something that you can do on a daily basis. Whenever you're talking with the Lord, you know, have notes. I have notebooks and all these things, and I, I'm on my phone. And like when God speaks to me, I write it down and I put it in the notes so you can go back to it and remember what he says. You know, our, our limited human minds cannot retain everything in the moment when a, a great and infinite God is downloading. So this is why he gave us the ability to write. So make sure that you're, you're writing these things down so that you can hear him and reflect on those things that he said. Um... Let's see. So it says, um, with so many believers praying for our country and specifically our government and uh, critical days in January, like January 26, how do we know what is happening in our world if we stay off media? That's a great, that's a great question. Um, I'm not saying fast information. I'm saying just fast media and Facebook and all that. Information has a way of getting around. No doubt you'll get a text, you'll get information, or you can inquire from, from somebody. But a lot of this is about trust too. Just trust the Lord. Trust the Lord that everything's going to work out fine. Trust the Lord that when we turn everything back on on January 31st, the will of the Lord is going to be done. And as He promised, He's going to take care of His people. So let's not make ourselves reliant on Facebook or the media or anything else. Let's be honest. The media is not doing their constitutional job. The media has become a, a, a biased propaganda machine that's promoting certain ideas. So that's not necessarily the best so source for information anyway. When all is lost and we don't know who to trust and, and confusion sets in, it's always best to go to the Word of God and just trust in the Lord anyway. So I would say, you know, let information come in as the Lord allows, but let's not be so anxious to try and figure out what's going on. We already know the end of the book. We know what Jesus said. So let's just, let's just be there with him and let him take care of the news for us. Amen? Uh, great question though. If we do ministry online through social media, through social media, are you suggesting that we stop that too? So if we do ministry online through social media, are you suggesting that we stop that too? Yes. Media, uh, social media, just like anything else, it's benign. It's how you use it. It could be used for malice or it could be used for good. So, but during this time, let's just shut it down. Let's shut it down. And whatever ministry you do online through Facebook or anything like that, do it in person. Dedicate that time. Instead of spending, you know, 10, 20 minutes uh, putting out a post that people may or may not read, go out and take 20 minutes to share the gospel with someone on the street. Always go out two by two, because that's just the wisdom of God. But let's get back to face-to-face -face witnessing. That was God's original intent. Facebook ministry is great, and a lot of people can be encouraged that way, but nothing takes the place of face-to-face, hand-in-hand, God loving people through you, and being able to give someone a hug, give them a word, being in the moment. That is the most powerful form of ministry. It is relational. Facebook, there's, there's such a distance. And there's so much lost on text and, and page when you're trying to minister to a person. So I would say, yes, shut it down. We're, 
We're going to black out Facebook. We're going to black out Instagram and all that stuff. And we're going to take it to the streets. We're going to church on the go. I want to remind everybody, remember next week, church on the go. Everybody be there. You want to minister? Forget Facebook. Let's do face to face. Let's go back to what Jesus did. You know, they didn't have Facebook 2,000 years ago. They didn't even have buildings for the first 256 years of the church. But the gospel spread like wildfire. Why? Because it was built upon people who had passionate hearts for Jesus Christ that would go anywhere and do anything that God called them to do. That is the place that we need to get to. We need to get away from the comfort and convenience of online and get out there into the face of people. And if we're honest, most people love doing online ministry because they're scared to do it face to face. We need to get over our fears and go out and love people the way God called us to. Meeting their needs face to face. I'll tell you right now, I don't know if Jesus would have an online ministry today. I really don't know if he would. I think he'd be out there hustling and bustling, making disciples, getting in people's faces, leading Bible studies, and doing things the way he always intended it to be done relationally. So I offer that. We're going to do it. And, and, and guess what? If you think your, your ministry is going to decline because you're not online, then you just got to put your trust in God. That might be an area you need to trust God in. All right? Good question. Um, do you think what's, that what's happening in our nation is an extension of the judgment started on 9-11 because we haven't returned to God? Um, that's, a, that's a loaded question. Um, what's happening in our country right now is because we depart from God. Wickedness and evil prevail when mankind depart from the basic tenets of the Christian faith. And it's not just our nation, it's every nation throughout history, and there's documented evidence of that. When you depart from the basic morality of your nation, you eventually decline and collapse until a more disciplined society comes in and takes over. So what we're seeing in our nation, um, you could call it the judgment of God, but really it's just a fulfillment of what God said would happen if, so, if a nation departs from him. We are seeing that. We're seeing a nation that was founded by people who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and wanted to establish a free society based on his principles outlined in his word. We are seeing us depart from those basic principles. And anytime you move the foundation of something that was built, the entire thing is going to collapse. Our foundation has been chipped away for decades. And this, this last year and uh, what's on the horizon for 2021 is just further chipping away unless the Lord intervenes and has mercy. So I'm not going to say it's an extension of what happened on 9-11. 9-11 is just an example of the wickedness that, that has come in. But we, we need to make sure that we are doing our part to, uh, number one, avoid the deception and the delusion that's infiltrating this world and stay true to the Word of God. We need to make sure that we are praying and interceding for God to come in and show mercy on our nation. And we need to make sure that we preach the gospel more than anything, because it's the hearts of the people that, it, that make sure that our nation runs well. So if we can bring the truth of the gospel to people to renew their hearts and minds, then those renewed hearts and minds elect good leaders. It is a, a moral people that can have a republic. But if we lose our morality, then we lose the republic as well. So it's a great question. Let me jump on real quick, see if we got any other questions on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube. All right. Amen. All right, family. Listen, I love you guys very much. Thank you so much for engaging uh, with the questions. Um, I pray that the Lord would minister you to you and your families during this time of fasting and, and prayer. And I want to encourage you guys, uh, again, download the, the app. We're not going to be on social media, but if you download the app and uh, sign up for the email list, that's how we're primarily going to be communicating during this time is through email and on that church app. So download, let me put that up there again. Download the church app. Here's the instructions on how to do that so you can be connected with us. We really want to make sure that we are connected during this time. Um, you can also put your email on there when you sign up so we can be in touch with you. 
And um, and lastly, family, I want to remind you again uh, and encourage you to give your tithes and offerings. One of the blessings that we have in our nation is that our government recognizes the value in supporting the local church, and they and they reward that through the giving of a tax deduction. Tax deductions exist in order to incentivize people to give their finances to the places that they choose that they know are going to be doing good work for the community rather than giving the taxes to the government when you may not necessarily agree with what they're going to do with it. So when you give your tithes and offerings, not only is it honoring the Lord, but it is a great way in order to ensure that the finances that God has given you are being uh, directed to a place where you would have them go rather than giving them to the government who might put them to other things. Now, of course, we pay our taxes and we honor that. We give taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs are due, as the Lord has instructed us, but we have this wonderful um, uh, benefit being in the United States of America where we do uh, uh, get a a tax deduction. And that just goes to further the kingdom as well. So I just want to remind everybody, if you have those last minute giving, we we would love uh, if uh, you would continue to support the ministry here. But again, wherever the Lord leads you, we appreciate you just being uh, faithful to the Lord and honoring him with your tithes and offerings. With that family, let me pray and release you. Lord God, Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your word and be in your presence. Lord, I pray for every single person who is out there listening right now. I pray that you would fill them with your peace, that you would give them provision, Lord God, that you would strengthen them in their purpose, and that, Lord God, you would give them all that they need by the power of your spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you would open up our hearts and minds to receive during this time of fasting and prayer and use us, Lord God, powerfully in our community. Use us, Lord God, to reach out to those who are hurt and lost and broken, Lord God. Use us as your vessels, as your ambassadors, as citizens of heaven, Lord God. Let us go forth and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with his salvation to those, Lord God, who are in need. We thank you for it. Father, bless every household. We love you, we praise you, and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I love you guys. Have a great week, and be on the lookout for new updates from Legacy Family Church. Bye-bye.